Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area, and I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today we're gonna do another reaction video. These are really fun and you guys seem to really enjoy these. Um, it's very stormy outside, so I'm apologizing if you guys can hear some of that thunder and rain noise. But today we're going to do a reaction to a YouTuber that I actually really like and her name is Leanne Says. And I was, I think I started watching her back in 2013, but I haven't really been keeping up with her a lot. But I saw that she has been doing a lot of decluttering and organizing videos. So I thought it would be a really fun time to do a reaction to one of her decluttering and organizing videos and see what we thought. So just like in all the other videos, I am not here to judge anyone. I am not here to roast anyone. I am here to uh, react and give you guys my professional opinion on whether or not I think she did a good job or whether or not I think she can improve on her decluttering and organizing process just from a professional point of view. I am actually really open to many styles. I don't have a set method that I think works for everybody. I think that you have to organize for the person you are right now. But I do think these videos are really fun because we can have a conversation about um, different organizing styles and get different different ideas on how to organize our spaces at home. And just quick shout out to Clover James. Can you see him right here? <laughs> he had a long walk in the heat this morning and now it's thundering and lightning so I'm glad I got that taken care of uh, but he's gonna be there just uh, snoozing away the whole time. So let's go ahead and watch Leanne says declutter her closet. Now the the title of the video is extreme closet declutter organizing post-apocalyptic <laughs> so i am looking forward to seeing what her process is let's go hey everyone as you can see by the title and hopefully as you can see by the state of my room it is absolute chaos in here but spoiler this is the donate pile everything everywhere that you probably can't even see because i'm blocking it and it's all on the floor over here is the donate pile but Guys, this is just something that does not come naturally to me on any level. I feel like there are people that are gifted and talented in this area of life. It comes very naturally, but me, I'm just missing that part of my brain. God did not give that to me. It's okay. I forced myself to do it. I have many reasons. Mainly, it was just absolute chaos. It was like an apocalypse closet. I could not see the floor any longer and it really got to me. I just get attached to things and I needed to work through that. So kudos to her for admitting that, that that organizing and decluttering is not something that she is great at doing. Not everybody is gonna be really efficient and great at getting their closet decluttered and organized. I see some comments on videos that are like, how hard is it to organize a closet? Well, for some people, it's really difficult. They do get attached to things, they get overwhelmed because a lot of the times it's because they're perfectionists and they think everything they want to do has to be perfect and they, they just can't do it at all to begin with. Um, but not everybody is really good at, at decluttering and organizing. And also not everybody's good at organizing things that have memories attached to them, right? You get sentimental. So a good thing to do is to recruit a friend or family member or somebody like a professional organizer who has not lived with your stuff, doesn't have any emotional attachment to your stuff to help you and it will make the process go a lot faster. So kudos to her for admitting she's not good at it. But let's see how she does. It seems like she did a pretty good job from the end I, I i don't know i keep clapping what the heck and it took me so long honestly i looked at it and i was like oh yeah i can do that in like a day or two no it took me days and days and days i've been working on this for so long you'll see me in several different outfits several different stages i've even got my hair done since i started this video i've changed this video <laughs> has changed me as a person. Basically, this decluttering clean with me type video is coming from the perspective of someone that it doesn't come naturally to. All right, hold on to your life because you're about to see the before <laughs> closet. It is so embarrassing. There is just stuff everywhere. Nothing makes sense. It's absolute chaos, madness. There is stuff stacked on that shelf under the top row of clothes. It, there was stuff everywhere you looked there was not an inch of space and there was no organization i just want to pause and say it doesn't for to me it doesn't look that bad <laughs> i've having seen like probably at this point hundreds of closets that closet looks pretty good i can see the floor there is stuff on the floor but i can see the floor i've been in closets where i can't see the floor where there's been like paper all over in the floor where you just couldn't walk in so um don't beat yourself up if your closet is a little if it's like at this level messy actually don't beat yourself up if your closet even is that 
you know, a pretty severe level of messy. Just know that it can be fixed. So this, I'm gonna tell you right now, it doesn't look that bad to me. Like I would be so excited to be there with her right now and like get in there. I get excited. I I do relate to that like whole thing with Marie Kondo and her like show. She was, I love mess. I, 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 I can relate. I can 100% relate. I love mess because I love the potential of going in there and making it look all neat and organized. It's so fun. All right, let's watch the video. Oh my gosh. Whatsoever. And it was just packed with stuff that I didn't want anymore. And it was hard to find what I needed. Look at these bags. That is horrible. I deserve to have no bags when I'm storing them like that. Well, like I genuinely so feel that way. And that is oh, one of the big so reasons cute. why I attacked this project with such gusto, with gazelle-like focus. <laughs> so here I am getting started on the process slowly but surely. I decided to attack the shoes and the bags first because for some reason in my head, I, I was thinking that that would be an easy way to dip my toe in. Um, it was not easy. Um, it was really hard. I, I'm showing you some shoes that I've kept since I was like 18 years old. They were red suede with fringe around the ankles and a gold heel and I was obsessed with them. We had good times together and I could not let them go for years and years and years. And I I, I actually enjoy that she's showing the process because um, I think it would have been an easier time for her if she would have just started by instead of picking one category is you just take everything out of the closet. I know that that's a really overwhelming um, idea to some people is taking everything out, but that's really going to make it go a lot faster. And you're going to, I mean, you're going to really have to like roll your sleeves up for that. It's just to pull everything out, all the shoes, all the bags, all the clothes. Um, a really good idea is to have a, a garment rack or just a place where you can put all of your clothes and put all of your shoes. Don't start to organize just pull everything out and then you can see the space you're working with. And then after you've pulled everything out, you can go through individually and acknowledge whether or not you wanna keep that or whether you wanna donate it or whether you wanna throw it away, they have holes in the soul or whatever. Because once you start in one one category, you've she started micro organizing before she started the big like macro organizing. And I think that that gets people into trouble because they, when they start getting detailed before they've done the big broad thing, you know, because sometimes when you're taking stuff out, you find all kinds of things, you find like trash and um, presents from, you know, back in the day that you never gave to somebody. So I, I would just start with taking everything out. Like if you just have your friend on FaceTime while you're cleaning things out, you can get opinions. You can share your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions. You can vent. You can show them the random crap you have in your closet. It can be fun. You can show them the, the glasses that don't look good on you at all on any level. Some trends are just not for me. All right, it's a new day and plot twist. This is my laundry room. It's also kind of my second closet. It wasn't ever supposed to be this, but it just happened somehow. <laughs> so clothes get cleaned, they get folded up, and they just stay here. I come and I get clothes out of here, but but usually clothes just come here to die. It's very sad. It's not at all what I want for my life. So I've taken this on as part of the closet clean out because I knew there was a lot of stuff in there that I didn't need because if it's just going in there and staying in there and I don't even know about it, like, do I really need it? Probably not. Good for her. It's good, good for her for acknowledging that the stuff that she's putting there is probably not stuff that she wants because it's going to another place to die. Uh, and that is usually what I recommend. If I find that when clients, when I'm working with clients and they have clothes in another location, like a second location, it's kind of like, you know, if you're like, if you're with an abductor, they take you to a second location, you're usually not going to make it out. Same with clothes. If you go to, if you take them to the second location, they're probably not going to work out, especially um, if it's like casual stuff like t-shirts. I personally do have a second location for uh, gowns and like special occasion dresses that I wear on stage. Um, however, that is a, the, those are like specialty clothes. They don't need to be with my other stuff and they're still in the same room. They're not in a, in a completely different room. However, but when you have like a two part closet where you have like some t-shirts in one closet and then like some t-shirts in another closet, it's really gonna be hard for you to maintain any kind of organized system. So I definitely recommend, if possible, and sometimes it's just not, but most of the time it is, I'm gonna tell you, to keep all of your clothes, your main clothes, your main wardrobe in one space so that you can see it all and so you know how much you have because 
out of sight, out of mind. It's totally true. It's true for me and it's true for a lot of other people as well. Going through each item, that is one part of the whole KonMari thing that I did use for this process. Yes, it's it's another new day. Uh, so I am going through and holding each piece and just really assessing like, is this what I want? Is this who I want to be? Like, does this spark joy? I believe in that. I'm into that. I, I want to just say, I'm not, I don't want to um, like, crap on KonMari method or whatever. I do, I do believe in, in, in evaluating each item and you know saying yes or no, whatever. But most of the time when I'm with people um, and, and with their spaces, they have uh, attachment issues with items. If you find yourself in the same position of having attachment issues with items, especially sentimental items, or you have memories attached to every um, maybe seemingly more mundane items, you wanna touch it as little as possible. <laughs> Uh, because when when you are touching it handling it you're becoming a little more attached to it so usually when I'm with clients I will touch the item um, and give them a sort of short amount of time before they can decide whether or not to really keep it and if they do too much evaluating sometimes it, it can go downhill a little bit so I, I want to encourage you to touch the items not I, I don't want you to like just don't fondle them okay just <laughs> just just handle them in a very um, casual manner and don't spend too much time evaluating. You can have a maybe pile. Um, I used to not really believe in the maybe pile, but, I, but you can have a maybe pile. Um, if you're really not sure, if you can't make your decision within a few seconds or a minute or two, put it in the maybe pile. And maybe your maybe pile turns out to be super huge. You can go back to like do a second edit, but try not to over handle your items because that can really um, cause you to be more attached to items than you than you even realize it even it works even in stores if you if you are shopping and you pick up an item and you hold it for a while you may be more inclined to buy that item so that, that's why I personally well if I see an item in the store I'll take a picture instead and then if I think about it the next day I'll look at the picture and be like okay I'll go back and get it but I, I, I don't carry it around with me in the store because I'm more likely than I think to actually check out and buy it and maybe I didn't need it. So uh, I don't know if that's exactly true, <laughs> but that's just, that's just what I've found is that the more you handle items, the more likely you're on, you are to hold on to them. So try it, it might work. Just That's just my opinion. And I was working with three basic rules as I was going through my clothes. Number one, if it doesn't fit, it's gotta go. Number two, if it's worn out, pilling, molting, whatever, <laughs> it's gotta go. And number three, if I haven't worn it in a year, it's gotta go. So that's something that I think that she did a really good job in is it's applying some keep it or get rid of it rules. And that's definitely what I recommend. Another qualifier, which I really like to tell people is ask yourself, do you really love this item? Because there are a number of things in your closet that you may have worn, they may fit you, you may, you know, kind of like it, but it's not really your favorite. And I am in the school of thought that everything in your closet should be your favorite. When I open my closet, I look in and I'm like, oh man, what do I want to wear today? Like this t-shirt's really cool. Like this blouse is really cute. And this skirt, oh, this skirt, I love this skirt. I want everything to be my favorite. I don't feel like, you know, I want to be really enthusiastic about like a mundane t-shirt. Like this t-shirt is not, not like, you know, I'm not super excited about the t-shirt but i happen to really like it i really like the way it fits i like the way it feels and i do love i love this t-shirt like okay yeah it's my favorite so you know what yes everything in your closet should be your favorite keeper keeper this one okay strange story i bought it before the road trip that we took and i bought it because in my crazy mind i thought maybe there's a small chance that Grant and I could get married in Vegas. This was not something that we talked about or anything like that. I just am crazy. And so I was like, oh, I want to have a white dress. <laughs> oh, look at this dress. I got it on sale. I think I need to think about it. Just notice each one of the stories that she's telling uh, about each garment or the memories that she has regarding each garment. This is the pattern that you can get yourself into, which is, re is really going to slow down your process. Um, items that we are sentimentally attached to or that are triggers for memories um, we want to hold on a little bit stronger because they feel like 
an extension of ourselves in which they they're not really but they if they feel like it and it's so much harder to let go of it because it feels like you're letting go of part of yourself so if you can figure out a way to have the memory without necessarily the physical trigger um, that will be something that's going to help you organize your space and know that these are just triggers for memories that they're not really extensions of you but be, be careful with you know the stories and the items don't let that slow down your process just evaluate, just ask yourself the questions. Do you love it? Does it fit? Have I worn it in you know, whatever period of time you're gonna qualify for yourself? Uh, do I love it? And just try to stick to that. Don't let the memories trip you up. She's organizing them by color, it looks like. That's okay, really so good. now that you've seen a lot of the process, I'm gonna take you into the closet and you're gonna see the after. You can see the floor. So this is a massive improvement, but a quick glance That's over, awesome. you can see. It looks great. Things have changed. Oh, things a have changed a lot in it. here. So first up for the dress section. I do wish she had gotten uniform colored hangers. <laughs> Um, or just uniform hangers in general. If you're looking for a quick, easy way to organize your closet without any effort, it's just to get all uniform hangers. They don't have to be expensive hangers. They can be like those white plastic hangers, but as long as they're all the same color, shape, and size, your closet's gonna look so much neater. So uniform hangers is like the secret to getting your closet organized without doing anything, basically. So um, I really wish, oh, I wanna get her all uniform hangers. I wanna pull them over there and like change them all, um, but I, I can't. I didn't do any organization from long to short or short to long, but I did do some color coding, which is honestly okay. not really me and mostly for the video. It probably won't. Okay, well then that's okay. I, okay, guilty of doing things for the video and not really, you know, or, or staging spaces, I'm guilty of doing that, but you really wanna organize for the person that is, that's you, that's your habit. So if I, if I were her, I would have definitely organized it by length because when when you have this this situation of the, like the the little roller coaster of lengths of clothes, you are losing a lot of the vertical space optimization. So like uh, you could have an area of short hang and then have your area of long hang and then that stuff in the middle where you have that space between the short hang and the floor. You can put like you know another short hanging bar or you can put some like a shelf with some boots or whatever um so organize for the person you are don't do it for the video girl i mean the color coding looks really cool but like you get you gotta do you but it looks nice stay like this but i am enjoying the way it looks down here underneath i do have this old vintage suitcase that oh, i got cool. a million years ago that and i refuse cool. to let go of it has a bunch of like old journals in it I, oh, that's a good I'm use of that. I'm still kind of a hoarder. Whatever. And then all <laughs> this stuff over here. I need to find a better spot for it, but right now it lives here. Oh, here I have my semi-ridiculous collection of sunglasses, a bunch that I don't wear, but I cannot let go of. You could definitely find a better container for it. Right now it's just in a cardboard box. I also have a bunch of headbands and some, you know, really, really essential bunny ears. So I know she's going to move, so this probably wasn't the best option for her at this point because you're just going to move this move the stuff to another space so you don't know what it's going to be like but if she were staying there I would have recommended that she buy a set of those modular drawers that she can just put in her closet I'll put a little thing on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about you can either buy um, a, a more expensive version of this or you can just buy like the cheapy one from Target either way is she's you're you're gonna get stuff off the floor because I always recommend that clients not put things on floors in closets because floors are like a, a danger zone in closets I find that you have to be very intentional about your usage of the floor in the closet especially if it's a, a, a reach in where the floor tends to be a little bit darker if you're going to store things on the floor you have to do so with intention either like shoe rack and like maybe you have a pile of shoes on the floor and then on the rack or you put things in bins where you can find them also since they were smaller items i always recommend that you put smaller items in a smaller size container so that they don't get lost you want to put things in a single layer especially if they're small like sunglasses so that you don't end up with stuff on the bottom because that's when stuff 
gets lost when things are either in the bottom or on or in the back. So you want to make sure that you can either see see things in the back and get to things in the back, or that you don't end up with things on the bottom. So I would recommend that she get a drawer unit for her closet, and that would make her life so much easier. There we go, clapping again. What is going on? Uh, and then I have other hang up pants down here, and then this section. Well. This is another section. I actually probably need advice from oh, you look guys. At her doing the file These are folding. all jeans, long jeans and shorts, and there's actually some. Okay, I I think, and I don't. I'm not. Again, I'm not trying to like criticize, but I think this is going to be difficult for her to maintain. It looks like because there's nothing holding up the piles, um, except for the ones on the bottom, I guess. So the piles are. Um, being being held up on the bottom by the shelving legs <laughs> but the ones on the top are gonna fall off so what I recommend is maybe a, a bin an open bin so that you can just shove them in that's gonna solve her problem or um, shelf dividers because this is gonna get really messy really fast I can predict it from here I know this is not gonna work <laughs> Um, but kudos if it does work. If it does work for her, she's amazing. But like, I could, I personally would never be able to maintain this. So I hope that she, um, I hope that this, I hope that she's got a better solution now. I did do the little stand up KonMari folding method. No, uh, I know she girl. does that for drawers, but I tried it for here so I could just see everything. This is, this is not ideal. I'm not really sure if <laughs> it's going to stay like this. It probably won't. This doesn't really seem sustainable, but I guess we'll see. She knows. Right here we have shorts girl. of all colors. These are my 80s mom shorts. Ooh, nice. And then up here we have a bunch of jeans. Moving on to this section over here, I have all of my handbags and clutches and little backpack purses, all kinds okay. of stuff like that. I even have a little stash of uh -oh. other bags. Yeah, oh, I probably girl. shouldn't have shown you this corner. <laughs> let's just let's just not look at that. Group them by color, but not okay, really. Good. But generally, all of these down here are more casual, everyday kind of sandals. And then I have some tennis shoes that snuck in over there. And then up here, this whole shelf of shoes. They're oh, she all did the black. alternating. They're all black and they're all mostly heels. There's That's no good. real rhyme or reason as far as season or occasion or anything like that. I just did all of the black ones on this shelf. Up here, I also have some black ones. More importantly, I also oh, have that's a portrait of Franny and Luna. Oh my this is God, my so dog, cute. in case you've never met her. And this is my parents' dog, Franny. <laughs> they are painted by an amazing artist. I will link her down below, especially shoes like this or this. I actually <laughs> never use these shoes, but I just like the way they look. I'm she not loves them. Rid of them. She loves them, and that's Whatever. the qualifier. This shelving unit here could probably be used a little bit better, but I just put shoes in almost haphazardly. I think by the time I got to this section, I was getting kind of tired. So up here, I have all of my jackets and coats and winter things. Oh gosh, I probably kept too many, but I did get rid of some. Mostly I'm looking at these two over here. I mean, <laughs> do I really need like two middle of the road brown faux fur coats? Probably, probably not. not. But I, but I like them, them girl. Honestly, I don't really have an excuse. They cute. Side thing, I don't think I've ever showed you guys this jacket, and I love it so Pink much. I also have to tell on myself a little bit. I did keep things like the dress I wore to my college graduation, even though I'm probably never going to wear this again. Another thing I kept that probably someone that is really great at organizing wouldn't have is this. This is my prom dress. Believe it or not. I have yes, my prom this dress. This is what I wore to my I prom. Have my prom I have my prom dress. I'm going to show it to you right now. This is my prom dress. However, um, this is a really fun, um, sparkly green dress and it still fits. And I have done two or three recitals, classical recitals, rest and classical music in this dress. So I still use this prom dress and I still have it. It's like a, I mean, I don't want to tell you how, I mean, I, my prom was in 1995, so that's how old this dress was, but it's from, um, it's size small, but Jessa, Jessica McClintock, that's who uh, designed this dress, and um, it's fabulous. So I don't, I don't hate on you if you still have your prom dress. I don't. All right, okay, guys, no. that's everything. Obviously, I've got my work cut out for me. I've got to bag it all up and go donate it. I'm so excited wow. for this final piece 
of the process. And like I said, actually, I don't know if I said this, I need to clean out my whole house. I did my bathroom, that's on my vlog channel. Uh, I need to do my makeup room. I'm scared to do my makeup room. <laughs> but if you guys really wanna see that, I can try to put something together. We could do it together. Let me know what you think down below. Okay, so that was her video. I think she did a really good job actually for somebody who uh, A, admitted they weren't good at organizing and decluttering, and B, is just like doing it by herself. That was a really big job for just one person. I will, and I and kudos for uh, showing the process and admitting, and admitting that it is a process. Uh, a space that big, and plus she had the other space down in the laundry room, it's gonna take a couple of days at the very least because there's just so much to work with so if you're organizing your closet and if you have a big space and a lot to go through be patient with yourself try to do it in like middle little mini stages give yourself maybe a, a window of like three hours and then take a break take a break you know have some food watch some Netflix take a nap talk on the phone um, play a video game or something if you're like me but give yourself a, a chance to get out of the zone and then when you feel ready again get back in the zone and i think that's what she did it worked really well for her i really liked the way her closet looked i do think she would have been better off um zoning her closet off a little bit more she seemed to have the shoes kind of um sprinkled in like spices you know like there's shoes over here and shoes over here and shoes down here um and also the accessories as well it's 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 really good to organ when you're organizing any space to have zones so i prefer to have you know like long hanging over here short hanging over here accessories over here and this is you know the the this fancy shoes and then i have like the regular shoes that i reach for every day that's kind of how i zone off my own space and it works because whenever i'm going to look for a pair of shoes I know where to go. I don't have to, you know, zone, like look around and see where is that black pair, especially if they're all, you know, a very similar color. Another thing I would have recommended is just to go ahead and invest in shoe boxes because especially if there are shoes that you're not wearing all the time, if you, especially if it's a lot of heels, those shoes tend to get really dusty if they just sit out. So investing in some really um, affordable clear shoe boxes has made the world of difference for a lot of my clients' closet. And plus, she would have been able to use that top shelf um, use the vertical space on that top shelf because I saw there was a lot of space between that top shelf and her ceiling. She could have just stacked the shoe boxes up there and saved a lot of space and that she could have used for other things, you know, setting up the bags and stuff like that. Anyway, aside from that, I think she did a really good job. I would love to go over there and help her, um, but uh, sadly that's not possible. But I really like um, that she showed the process. I love that she's a real person, a real girl with a great sense of humor. I actually love Leanne Says. Um, if you guys want me to react to another one of her videos, I'm happy to. I haven't watched her in a while and I really enjoy her. I forgot how much I do. Um, but if you guys found this video helpful and entertaining and fun, stop clapping. I, <laughs> I have more videos on the channel like this. I publish uh, three times a week at the most <laughs> and I do organizing and cleaning videos and uh, videos about my life as a singer. So if you're interested, please subscribe. I'm here and I'm here to entertain you. Okay, you guys, I hope you're having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.